Welcome to this lecture for the University of Utah's ME 1010, a freshman mechanical engineering class. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about microcontrollers. I like to think about a microcontroller as being a computer on a single integrated circuit. It's a very scaled down version of what you have in your laptop or desktop. Microcontrollers are designed to be an easy interface to external hardware. This can include things such as sensors, for instance, the uh, micro switches and the photo transistors that you're using for your project, uh, actuators such as motors and solenoids, displays such as the serial LCD you've used, uh, and storage devices. You can also connect these up to uh, some external memory if you have some data that you want to collect and store. Typically there's support circuitry built in. So here's a lot of acronyms, of course CPU, ROM, and RAM, you probably know from the specs on your own computer. These apply to microcontrollers as well. PWM, we've talked about for uh, how we uh, pulse width modulation, what we use to control the speed of our motors, speed and direction. ADCs are analog to digital converters, and so we've got analog and digital input and output pins that we can use to essentially give data to our microcontroller or get data out of our microcontroller. There are lots of varieties of microcontrollers. Uh, some of those are listed below. You can do a search, you can find uh, a bajillion different kinds of microcontrollers. All right, now a microcontroller itself is just a little chip, uh, which means that typically as mechanical engineers, we, we may not be working with the chip itself. We may want to be plugging in our sensors and our motors and our actuators um, into a, a larger support structure. So we use uh, augmented microcontrollers. An augmented microcontroller is just a circuit board that has the microcontroller and some additional useful circuitry. This might include voltage regulators so that we get the right voltage to the microcontroller as well, well as any sensors or actuators we're using, op amps, resistors, capacitors, collapse timers, LEDs, LCD screens, button switches, uh, etc. Um, and once you talk about augmented microcontrollers, you really are talking about miniature um, computers. You can think about the uh, different buttons and switches that it's being a very simple form of a, a keyboard. It provides you a way to give information to your computer and LEDs and L LCD screens can get you you can use those for the microcontroller to give you information so these are sort of like a monitor uh, what's a really good example of an augmented microcontroller well Arduinos that's what we use in uh, ME 1010 and you'll use them next year sophomores as well all right here's a picture of the Arduino Uno uh, you can see the link below that goes to the Arduino website. It's a great platform because it's open source, source both the hardware and software. The software that you've been using in lab, you can go ahead and download onto your own personal computer. Uh, and there's a really huge user community. Um, easiest way to get here, honestly, just Google Arduino and you'll get to the main website. Uh, and then you can look for tutorials. There's a forum if you've got questions. Uh, and there's a playground where other people have uploaded their cool pieces of code uh, that you can download and take a look at. Now, this was the original UNO, some of which we have in lab. Uh, you can see it's based around the Atmega microcontroller. Here's the big dip version uh, in a socket where you could pull out this microcontroller and put a new one in if you, if you needed to. Uh, the ones that we've given you in class, uh, and these you get to keep, uh, are actually the surface mount version. So this, is, this chip has the same functionality as the picture on the previous slide, uh, but you can see it's way smaller. Um, same microcontroller. Uh, this is what it looks like. If you if you look at the one we gave you, you'll see it looks like that. Um, it's 30 bucks on SparkFun. It's a really great value for what it does. Uh, part of it being open source is that both the schematics and the CAD files for the actual circuit board are available online. I didn't uh, pull the screenshot of the uh, actual circuit board files, but here's the one of the schematic. You can go ahead and you can look here and you can see where everything is connected to on that main Arduino Uno board. Uh, here are some of the specifications pulled from the Ar Arduino Uno main website. Uh, hopefully you remember this from when you did the, the reading about the Uno board, but again the microcontroller is the AppMega 328. It's got an operating voltage of 5 volts, which means, as you know from lab, that you can run it off the USB port of your computer while you're doing some of the programming, uh, and then once you're ready to run it with your motors, you need to give it uh, a higher current uh, power source and so you'll be using the 7.2 volt batteries and you can see that uh, that's going to fall right in what they recommend for the input voltage 
Um, and again, here you can see the, the listings of the, the various different uh, aspects of the UNA board. There's way more information than this uh, available on the Arduino website. All right, and here's the shield board uh, that we designed for use in this class. Uh, and this just augments our augmented microcontroller a little bit further to give you easy access to some of the, the functionality on the board. Uh, let me just remind you of a few of the things you've uh, encountered already with the shield board. Uh, here's, of course, is what it looks like when it's sitting on top of the Arduino. And let's pull up a little bit brighter color so we can circuit, circle some things on here. This right here uh, is our motor driver chip. This is what's going to take the commands from the microcontroller on the Arduino board, and it's going to interface with the battery. Um, over here is where you're going to plug in your battery, your 7.2 volt. Uh, and over here is where you're going to plug in your leads to your motors. And again, for your contest, you can have two motors. Um, so the motor driver takes the commands from the microcontroller, and it communicates with the battery to scale up a teeny tiny command coming from the, the microcontroller to a big monster um, current uh, flow going from the battery to the motors. Um, let's see, some other things you want to take a look at on the board. This switch right here, you should have encountered in lab. Uh, this is one that in the position it's uh, these two switches are shown. Uh, if they're down at that position, they're enabling these analog inputs. And if you move them to the other direction, uh, that will enable the phototransistor inputs. So move this way for phototransistors. Uh, you should have seen that already in the lab before spring break. Um, let's see, what else do we want to mention about that? Um, there's some nice things you'll see next year as sophomores up here at the back. Uh, there's some pins that are for encoders. You'll learn how to use encoders to look at uh, how your motors are spinning. And, oh, very important, our uh, first uh, mistake that we found on the board uh, is a bit of an embarrassing one, but here we go. Um, this is our on-off switch, and uh, you've probably mostly used this connected to the uh, computer, and when you're connected to the computer, it's just on. The on-off switch doesn't have any functionality. But once you plug in your battery, you want to use the on-off switch to turn it off so that you're not draining your battery. And unfortunately, our labels on the board are reversed. So uh, turn to on to turn off the battery. Oops. All right. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully that will be a pretty easy thing for you to remember. Okay. Now, uh, if you've looked through the library that we've provided you, um, there's a bunch of documentation. It's an MHT file. Uh, you'll want to open that uh, up in something like Word, and that will give you a way to click through it and read the different, different functions. Um, and so here are, there's a number of functions that are provided in there, but I just want to touch briefly on the ones that you'll be using as you develop your code for the contest. Um, these first two, read photo and switch state, are two that you can use uh, to look at what your phototransistors are doing and what your switches are doing. And you want to do that so you make sh sure you can figure out that everything's working. You might use those this week as you're doing some of your debugging of all your um, various components, but you can use that with a light to make sure that your phototransistor is working the way that we want. Uh, you can use it with the switch to make sure you understand what closed and open means in terms of your switch. Um, and so you can use these to explore and debug your phototransistors and switches. And you'll remember that every team has two phototransistors and two switches. And that's what you're basically going to use as your inputs to your program to figure out where you are on the contest. You need to read one phototransistor at the very beginning um, 
to determine when the light goes on and when you can start the contest, you're going to need to use one of the switches to detect the first target. You're going to need to use the second switch to detect the second and final target. And you're going to need to use the second photo transistor to detect the uh, infrared light and stop your vehicle at the end of the course. All right, so that's basically going to give you four different states that you're looking for. Um, once you understand, once you know that your phototransistors and your switches are working and you understand what the different readings from them mean in terms of what you'll be looking for on the contest, then you want to start to think about putting your code together by using these uh, different weight functions. So there's one that's weight for photo to exceed and one that's weight for switch. And so these are what you're going to use to set up in your program um, these four different uh, points in the course. So you'll want to figure out what value uh, you need to wait for your photo to exceed for uh, at the start and the beginning. You'll have to do some experimenting with your robot and with the uh, contest course. Um, and then you'll also need to use the function wait for switch to figure out when you've gotten to those two targets. So you'll want to set these up in the appropriate order uh, and use these to formulate your code for the contest. All right, now in between these different weight functions, uh, these last three are what you're going to use for your actuators. So set motor power is going to allow you to use the PWM to set the appropriate motor power uh, for, your, for your motor on your device. Brake motor, remember, um, you should have seen this in lab the week before uh, brake, but brake, brake motor um, nicely stops your motor as opposed to just cutting power to it. Uh, it's a little bit gentler to those brushes on your motor. And remember, we're using really cheap motors, so we want to be as gentle to them as possible. Uh, and then activate solenoid is going to activate solenoid. Make sure you read all the documentation about these. Uh, they're going to tell you there's some maximum and minimum uh, limits that you can put in. Um, we've fi fixed uh, some maximum and minimum limits uh, to the solenoid. If you put in numbers higher or lower than that, uh, it'll default to the maximum and min. And that's uh, mainly so that you don't destroy your, your solenoid that you were given. Um, so these you're going to use to activate your actuators. I'm going to draw an arrow here at the appropriate time point. All right, so at this point, you should have all the, the knowledge you need to go ahead and uh, start writing, putting your code together uh, for the contest uh, and to debug all of your sensors. Be sure to, your, to talk to your TAs if you have any questions and let us know if you need some help um, putting together the code so that you can make your, your robot work on the day of the contest. Thanks, and thanks for listening to this ME1010 video lecture.